Ah, the recruit. That name takes me back. An idea never done before in Australian history. A reality TV show featuring aspiring part-time footballers the ultimate prize of an AFL contract. It was always the highlight of the week, coming home from footy training and whacking on Fox 8 on a Wednesday night and seeing all-time AFL greats crack the shits at suburban footballers for 60 minutes. How many times have I said it? Is that have a collision? Give me a reason why I shouldn't delish you right now. Right in his throat. Do you want to be here? Still one of my all-time favourite quotes. We're now reaching upon a decade since the opening season came out in 2014. So I thought let's take a trip down memory lane and see how all the contestants from season one fared on the show. As well as what the title suggests, where are they now? Because of the video length, I've decided to just do season one in this video today. So feel free to leave a like and subscribe for season two. And just a quick disclaimer, all the plays in this video today are highly respected. And this video today doesn't portray any negative light towards these people. It has been a while since we've watched the show, so I'll quickly give a recap on how the series worked to jog your memories. Season 1 kicked off revealing a squad of 13 players cut down from 50 through multiple tests including a gruelling run to the MCG and of course a game of footy to determine who would go through and who would go home. Season 2 went through a similar procedure in the first episode, however the squad of 15 players cut down from 50 was done off camera prior to the start of the episode. It also had the same format of the first season, with players taking part in a multi-sport race from the MCG and a game against the Carlton Reserves with one player being axed at the end of the episode. With the initial squads revealed, every episode went through all kinds of physical and mental challenges, activities and tests, with also of course including games of footy. A key part of the recruit was the captain's challenge, where the winner of every episode would receive the captain's armband and immunity from being delisted that week. The end of each episode saw at least one person go home. This was done through a process called Rate Your Mate where the contestants ranked their bottom three players on who should get the boot. The three players who accumulated the highest amount of votes were called out to the front and the coaches named the player who'd be delisted and leave the show. The captain's challenge winner also had their say in the delisting stage as they could substitute themselves or a player in and out of the bottom three. This was repeated every week until there was a final three with a live season finale to determine who would obtain the holy grail of an AFL contract. The show was done under the eyes of highly credible names too. Michael Voss and Mick Malthouse were the head coach for a season each. Ben Dixon was the assistant. One of the best fitness gurus in the world of Darren Burgess was the high performance coach. And accomplished sports administrator Lee Russell was the mind coach. These were the people pulling the levers each week, carefully determining and finding out under heavy deliberation on who were AFL ready. So with all of that explained, let's now go through Season 1 and see what the contestants are up to after their time on The Recruit. As explained earlier, the pilot episode of Season 1 kicked off with unveiling the initial squad of 13 players, determined through a run from Docklands to the MCG whilst carrying a concrete block and a game of footy against each other. Episode 2 featured the first captain's challenge, with a goal-kicking test during halftime of a St Kilda vs Adelaide game. Ryan Smith won the test and he'd lead the pack through the first team challenge. The contestants then completed a beep test and agility test for the coaches to gain some data and scratch the surface a bit more on the player's physical abilities. Due to his poor kicking in the goal kicking test and not much of a game breaking edge to a small frame, Tyrone Armitage was the first player delisted. Prior to joining the show, Tyrone was a carpenter and a handy player in the Sydney AFL League, winning the league's best and fairest award in 2013. After the show, he continued to apply his trade as a chippy, had a stint in the VFL for the Northern Blues, and currently plays for the Broad Beach Cats in the Queensland AFL League. Episode 3 started off with a mentally gruelling captain's challenge, with contestants having to do a vertical jump, but do it jumping off a ledge at the top of Marvel Stadium. Chris Morland got the highest score and he received immunity for that week. The recruits then played a game of footy against inmates from the Durringle Prison. A highly physical game, but they won convincingly. 
Post game, the recruits found out that there were two opposition players that were not inmates. Mark Sisko, an American, and Puldrick Lucy, an Irishman, were two of the highest ranked international players, playing undercover for the prisoners team, and they joined the show from that point onwards. James Bracklin was voted the weakest player through Rate Your Mate, as well as a lack of performance and versatility with his big frame, he'd be the next player to listed. James was one of the more unique contestants on the show, displaying a bit more of a feminine persona, being a part of a polyamorous relationship, wearing nail polish, being a pole dancer, and proudly stating he's very different. After the show, he went back to playing for Macquarie University in AFL Sydney. Today, he displays a completely different appearance than what he was 10 years ago, as he's now a transgender and now named Imogen. She is a proud transgender community advocate who actively seeks to reduce transphobia and works as a youth caseworker while still playing AFL today. Frustrations flew when tempers flared in episode 4, with the boys copping a beating from the coaches after a tough game against some of Victorian's best policemen. Michael Hutchinson was highlighted as one of the worst performing players on the ground, and he'd be given the axe straight after the game, right there and then. Michael was working as an apprentice plumber prior to the recruit, and he'd head back to continue his profession in Queensland, as well as play for the Aspley Hornets, who he still plays for to this day. Interestingly enough, Hutchison was identified as a draft prospect in 2013, but his talent on the recruit wasn't to be. Later in the episode saw Daniel Johncock become the fourth player to leave the show. He showed flashes throughout games, but ultimately his inconsistency and a lack of coachability were the key reasons for his delisting. The Tasmanian was putting together some solid footy prior to the show. He had won a flag with South Launceston, trained with Essendon, and was trying to break into a VFL club. After his delisting, he'd head back to Adelaide for university study, as well as play for the Kapunda Bombers in the Barossa Valley region. Currently, he's back in Victoria, playing for West Coburg in the EDFL, with also making the league's Team of the Year side in 2021. Episode 5 saw the boys head up to Northern Territory to get a taste of the local footy at the annual Indigenous Carnival, as well as the local life and atmosphere. Northern Territory native Waylon Manson got the captain's armband for the week because of his knowledge and experience. The recruits worked very well as a team, knocking off the Indigenous side in good style. Despite some great performing players, some of the contestants seemed to struggle with some of the conditions. Some conflict flared up during the group's Rate Your Mate session. Chris Morland copped a spray from Vossi for breaking the team's curfew for having a few too many frothies. But in the end, because of Ryan Smith's subpar performance and work ethic, the first episode's Captain's Challenge winner was the contestant sent home in episode 5. Previously playing for East Perth and plying his trade as a personal trainer, his dad and sister, Wayne and Christy, were professional golfers, with Christie still playing to this day. After the show, he chose not to continue to chase his AFL dream, and instead, he became a real estate agent in Perth, which he still does for a living today, selling luxury properties. The lads hit the beach in episode 6, undergoing some tough tests against each other. Some contestants' mental toughness would get found out in their team challenge, of having to board paddle multiple kilometers back to shore. Waylon Manson most definitely had the talent on the field, but massively lacked the commitment, drive, and mental fitness to continue on with the show, as he'd be the next player delisted. As stated earlier, Waylon was an indigenous boy from Outback Northern Territory. Prior to his delisting, he had struggled with most of the challenges because of the unfamiliar surroundings and atmosphere. That didn't let his AFL dream die out there and then, however. He was a highly rated draft prospect in 2011 and continued to stay in Victoria after the show, playing for Bo Morris and then the Frankston Dolphins in the VFL the next year. He returned back to the country a few years later, having stints in Alice Springs and East Kimberley. Currently, the 195cm forward plays for the Tiwi Bombers. The next man to go was Mark Sisko, the American. A lack of skill was the predominant reason. Before his recruitment into the show, he graduated from Columbia University in the States, 
as well as play Division I basketball for the college. He returned back home to the States after the show and currently works as a senior manager at a business management consultant company of Cap Gemini. Episode 7 saw the contestants have their toughest test yet, playing an all-star side featuring former AFL greats such as Aaron Hamill, Brad Ottens and Brad Johnson. Nathan Jackal's hard at the footy approach and explosiveness was admired, but a lack of polish with his skills and potential compared to the other contestants was the reason for his delisting in episode 7. Before the show, Nathan worked as a concreter in his dad's concreting business. After the recruit, he went back to play footy for the Dali Football Club in Ballarat. It has been a while since he's hung up the footy boots, as he currently works as an operator for a civil engineering company, Sycon Civil. Episode 8 saw the remaining seven recruits head to the nation's capital to take part in a military team challenge, as well as testing their limits with some of the physical tests at the AIS, including swimming, boxing, busting their guts out on the rower, and doing their tests again from episode 2, such as the beep test and vertical jump. Things got emotional in the Rat Your Mate session, with Reese Maxwell going to a mate's wedding before their trip to Canberra, with almost getting delisted from the repercussions. Unfortunately, Brendan Goss picked up a leg injury, requiring to be in a moon boot, which sadly led to his delisting. After the series, Brendan played for the Baldwin Tigers in the Eastern Football League. Goss then returned to his junior footy club in 2016, Old Xavierians, which he still plays for today. You'll hear the roar if he kicks it. That's a magic moment for Brendan Goss. For work, Brendan was a commercial property salesman and currently he's the director of business development at a business company called Amicus. Things were getting tense in episode nine and the stakes were getting high. Plays were pushed to the limits once again as three recruits would see themselves out the door and not make the season finale. Ryan Semmel was the first to go for being the first player out in the Cinderblock Challenge. Ryan played for the Huntley Footy Club the year after the show. He had some great success for Huntley, picking up three league best and fairest awards in the process. To this day, he's had many stints around Victoria, including Morty Alec in the Southern Football League, the Stanhope Footy Club in the country, and East Brighton. Ryan currently works as a director at an electrical installing company of Semco Electrics. Moving on with the rest of episode nine, the remaining five recruits had their biggest test yet, being split up between both sides and playing in the Sample Showdown at Adelaide Oval. The two ruck prospects, Irishman Pudrick Lucy and Brady Foster had a great battle. And the midfielders of Chris Morland, Reese Maxwell and Johan Wagner left it all out on the field. Some tough deliberations between the players and coaches then took place. There was a very fine line on who would move on to the draft and who would go. The next player to listed was Reese Maxwell. Hailing from Western Australia, Reese was a productive and talented basketballer playing for Gillette College in the US before he made the switch to Aussie rules. After getting delisted, Reese went back home to play for Claremont in the Waffle, but only lasted a season. He then decided to go back to his roots and play basketball, which turned out to be a good success. Currently, he plays for the Kalamunda Eastern Suns in the NBL One West, the highest semi-professional basketball league in the country. He averages roughly eight points per game. With Johan and Brady announced that they are through to the draft, it was out of Pudrick and Chris to get the final spot in the season finale. It was announced that because of Chris's skills and preparation, he'd get the final spot, whilst the Irishman got the unfortunate delisting. On the show, Pudrick's progression, self-improvement and mental toughness was second to none but ultimately it was the raw talent that Michael Voss just couldn't see come to fruition on an AFL contract. But that was only through his eyes, as in the end, Pudrick was actually picked up by Geelong in the rookie draft. He spent two seasons in the hoops, plugging away in their VFL side, stating in a recent article that he learnt so much. However, the Irishman couldn't get a game in the seniors and was delisted at the end of 2016. He had one more crack at AFL footy for Geelong local side Newton and Chilwell before heading back home, going back to college to finish the mathematics and geography degree 
he'd started five years earlier. Currently, he's teaching physical education and maths in a small Irish town of Karagtu Hill. In terms of sport, the now 31-year-old also returned to playing Gaelic and basketball. So now we reach upon the season finale. With it being live, it featured plenty of reminiscing from the past episodes, including all the past contestants making an appearance. As well as many ad breaks and lengthy interviews, it sure knew how to spread out the show to fit under the 60-minute requirement. Reminds me of other live events. <clears throat> Eventually, the AFL world found out that Johan and Brady were the two finalists, which meant Chris Morland finished in third spot. Skills-wise, the newly married Chris was probably one of the best on the show. He had a great engine and could kick very well on either foot. The Geelong boy plied his trade as a bricklayer before his time on the recruit, and he continued his footy career for the Geelong West St. Peter's Footy Club. The four-time Vic Country representative moved on from the Roosters in 2018 and became the head coach of the Wyndham Vale Footy Club for a season. In 2021, Moreland signed for Powtown of the Outer East Footy League, who he still plays for today. Unfortunately, Chris had some brushes with the law. Not too long ago, he assaulted a security guard at a nightclub in Geelong. He pleaded guilty to the assault last April and was sentenced to an 18-month community corrections order. So then there were two, Brady Foster, the ruckman from Queensland, and Johan Wagner, the forward from South Australia. With the plays making a plea on why they should be taken in front of the recruiters, and plenty of highlight packages played, the winner was finally announced. And that man was... Yeah, I don't know why I'm making a big fuss about it. The show's 10 years old, for goodness sake. Everyone knows it was, of course, Johan Wagner, which left the runner-up of Brady Foster, one of the most improved contestants throughout the duration of the show, given he was always in the bottom three in the early episodes. Before his time on the recruit, Brady was a top volleyball player, being the former captain of the AIS volleyball team. Since his old man was a former VFL player for the Fitzroy Lions, it was a key reason on why he made the switch. The ruck forward continued his AFL journey post the show. Alongside finishing his uni study, he returned to the Wilston Grange Gorillas in the South East Queensland League. Season 2 winner Matty Eagles also plays for the club today. Speaking of Season 2, Foster had a crack in applying for the show's next season in 2016, but failed to make the final squad. That year, however, he did make the Queensland Team of the Year side. He last played for the Gorillas in 2021, and from looking in every corner of the internet, it is unknown what he does today. And finally, the winner, Johan Wagner. He was the favourite to win the show early on, and deservedly so. He had played for the Central Districts in the Sandful prior to the show, with some spectators stating that he could play. His overall mix of speed, skill, and character were on display throughout the 10 episodes, with the South Australia in the end deciding to stay in his home state, accepting Port Adelaide's contract offer over the Suns and GWS. At the time, Port Adelaide were coming off a prelim final, so it probably seemed that it would be a struggle to see Wagner get senior games for the club. Unfortunately, the Cat B rookie was delisted after only a year with the pair without playing a single AFL game. The 13 Gamma and Port Adelaide Sample side then moved back to Port Lincoln in search for work. The filming of the show got him the sack from his electrician apprenticeship, so his whole focus shifted away from football as he got a job in the mines while supporting his fiancée. Today, he's enjoying life in South Australia with his now wife and two kids. A few years after his delisting, he was featured in an article about his time at Port Adelaide stating he didn't feel like he really belonged there because I didn't come into the club the normal way. I didn't really feel I deserved to be there. One minute you're introducing yourself to guys you've watched for years on TV and then you're sharing lockers with them and training with them. I probably never felt I belonged. It was a lot tougher coming in the unusual way I did and I felt because of that I had to work so much harder. I just put far too much mental pressure on myself. If I had one bad training session or I didn't hit targets, I'd come home and just get so down on myself. I don't think a one-year contract was enough. I was coming in so underdone, and I think with a two-year contract, your body would have the chance to get used to the challenges. 
It's a really interesting and eye-opening article to reflect upon. In now a retrospective view, was the recruit just a complete waste of time and an inefficient way of player recruitment? It was definitely an enjoyable show to watch, but in the end, it felt like collectively, the show went through so much effort for such little reward, hence why the series only lasted two seasons. And from what we were able to hear from the contest winner himself, the prize of an AFL contract through reality TV didn't really give the proper physical and mental preparation for entering into an AFL system. So ladies and gentlemen, there was a revisit of every contestant from season one of The Recruit and seeing where they are now and what they got up to after the show. Because of the lack of engagement and noise post the show, the research was very limited. So there might not be much detailed information for each contestant, but it is what it is. I started earlier, because of the video length, I've decided to leave a season two for a separate video. So if you found this video enjoyable and informative, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll get season two out soon. So I hope you did enjoy everyone, and until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.